Hello and welcome to another episode of my Working with Todoist series. My name is Carl Pauline and this week I want to talk to you about speeding up your use of Todoist. Now, Todoist have recently launched through their experimental program a new feature called Command Menu. Now, Command Menu is built around keyboard shortcuts and this reminded me that Todoist have some amazingly powerful keyboard shortcuts which I haven't covered for quite a long time. So I thought with the launch of the impending launch of Command Menu in Todoist, I thought this would be a great opportunity to refresh your minds on using keyboard shortcuts and to show you how you can navigate around Todoist so much faster. Now I want to point out and I really must stress that the command menu is at the time of recording an experimental feature. Now I'm going to show you in the video how to turn that on if you want to use it but as with all experimental features essentially it's beta versions and if it's a beta version you have to expect that there may be some bugs in the system although I found with Todoist that very rarely happens. Okay let me just ask if you do get any value from this video then please help me by clicking on the like button below and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you want to get all the latest tips, tricks and news on using Todoist then please subscribe to my channel. Okay let me take you into my demo account now. I'm going to show you all you need to know about keyboard shortcuts and Todoist. Okay, so here we are in my demo account and I would want to show you some of the more common keyboard shortcuts that if you're not using the experimental features of Todoist, you currently have these keyboard shortcuts. Now the quickest way to find out if there is a keyboard shortcut available is to go along the top and you'll see. So if I do over here, which is the menu, close menu, all I have to do is hit the M button. So if I hit M, that will close the sidebar. If I hit M again, it will bring the sidebar back. That really helps to give you a focused view on your day and just allow you to see what needs to happen. Then you've got your home button here. Now the home, as you can see, I've got here go to home G then H. Now this is because I've already got the command menu installed. However, home also has another one. So this is my home. I use a dashboard view, which is my inbox and my today's flagged tasks. So if I just go to today, which is my all my tasks, and I just hit H, H will take me, which H means home, will take me to the dashboard, which is right there. The next one along, you've got F as right there, which would mean search. So if I hit F, it'll bring up my searches. By the way, I really want to express this one. This one here is something that I use quite frequently in my regular Todoist. Now that's largely because quite often I don't clear out all my tasks at the end of the day. Once I've done my end of day planning, I know that I've done all the most important things in Todoist. So the very next day I can wake up and some of my routine end of day tasks like clearing my action this day folder in email, doing my admin are still there. I've, I've done the tasks but I just haven't checked them off and this is just a quick way of bringing them up. Just typing in overdue. Now obviously if I just tap that now I've got nothing in overdue. Um, what it's doing is just picking up anything that might have the word overdue in there but at the moment I don't. So that's F for your search and then as you go along you can see open productivity so it's O which would mean O. This is for the command menu which we'll get to in a moment and then P and then we've got other things here open help and information O and then H for help. So there are a few things that you can do. I do use keyboard shortcuts all the time but the one that I use most is if you go into settings of your Todoist and you go to advanced, what you can see here is show hide Todoist and quick add tasks. Now if I'm being completely honest I very rarely show hide Todoist because I use uh, I use a Mac and I just use the, the application switcher in Mac. But the one I'm using all the time is this one here, quick add tasks. So for me it's uh, shift command A, I use A meaning add 
And that means on any application that I'm using, whether I'm going full screen view or whatever, all I have to do is shift command A and I can quickly add a task. And I use that all the time on my Mac whenever I'm working on my Mac. And that's something that I really strongly suggest if you want to get much, much faster at using to do is, And also the more important thing, collecting anything that needs collecting, you need to make that as easy and as simple as you possibly can. And using the quick add task is so important. So if I just close that and I'll show you what that would look like. So when I do shift command A, I get my task description comes up right here and I can add the task. I can move this around, by the way, wherever I want to do. And I've got all the information that I need to add the task. And that little box, that little window will come up in any application that I'm using. So what are we using here? Well, let me just go into the web that uh, to do is help, which, which came out uh, earlier this week. So there is a lot of things that you can do within Todoist and it's really, really worth learning these keyboard shortcuts. But the, the key with learning keyboard shortcuts is don't try and learn them all, all the time like you were trying to learn vocabulary when you were at school. That's not the best way to learn. It's just to pick one or two that you use all the time. Adding a task is a really good example. Moving around to different projects like moving back to your home screen. But let's just go here. So what we've done here is you can click the question mark key, which is right up. Let's just go down here. It's right there, which is now you can add that. You can just click that. Or let's get into the keyboard shortcuts. On a Mac, it's Command K or on a Windows, it's Control K. Now, what you probably need to do is experiment with this if you're using the web version of Todoist. I have checked here, as you can see on this side, the platforms that this is available is web, Mac OS and Windows 10. So if you're using the web version, Version, I would suggest that you actually just experiment whether it's control K or command K and you can do all sorts of things so how to navigate with your to do is so if you go in here you've got quickly jump from task to task with the arrow down key or J arrow up key okay I use the arrow keys perform actions like selecting X editing command E control E so you can just have a look I, these ones I'm not really playing with but what I do is move between a lot of these like navigating around the app that's what I tend to use a lot more so H for going home today would be G and then T upcoming G and then upcoming I use upcoming a lot projects I don't use on a day-to-day -day basis I rarely go into my projects I don't have any labels notifications and settings so this is what it's all about now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you now in Todoist let's just um remove this because I don't need to show you that web. By the way, I'll put a link to this web page while we're here. I'll put a link to this web page in the show notes so you can actually have a look at that and see what you can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my, we've got to check for the, the keyboard shortcut here, the control, the command and K. So while I'm here, I'm going to do command K. That brings up this menu. So while you're learning this, you can just remember to use command or control K and to bring up these. So you can actually use all these. So as you, as I'm in that, I can now go, um, let's go open inbox. Let's get back onto that. Oh, <laughs> I would wish it would work. Um, so keyboard shortcuts right here, by the way, you can actually get to your keyboard shortcuts there. Um, let's go back to this one here and we go to new command menu. So go to inbox. So I was using O and then I is go. Think of it this way, go and then wherever you want to go. So we're in dashboard at the moment. So I'm going to G and T will take me to today. I like that gin and tonic. That's an easy one to remember. G and T will take me to today. And then we've got G and inbox. So I can just go to my inbox there. So this is a really, so think of G as go. And let me bring back up this menu. So we've got some really good ways of remembering it. Quick add has been around for a while, which is Q. Uh, these are normal shortcuts, but you can actually type in things here. So let's type in uh, labels, go to labels. So I can just click there and it will take me to labels. Now this is my demo account. So I do actually have some labels. Uh, so I can go there. Uh, command K, bring that back up. Show hide navigation bar, it's been around for a while. So there's a lot of things that you can actually do here using G and then open productivity, OP, that's bringing up your karma points. 
open notifications, open profile photo menu, open settings, open themes, open activity log. So you've got quite a few and I'm pretty sure that Todoist over the coming months and years are gonna be adding to this menu. But the main point, point of using keyboard shortcuts is to, to help you to speed up using Todoist. The faster you are inside Todoist means you've got more time to actually get the work done. The biggest problem I see with productivity apps is they suck you in and you spend way too much time inside the actual apps organizing and you're not doing enough to do the work that matters. This is just going to speed up your usage of Todoist. But the way to learn them is just pick one or two and just practice using them. Don't allow yourself to click on the side menu. If you want to go to today, go to today, GNT, um, you can just do that. If you want to go as you're doing your planning, you want to go to upcoming, go upcoming and you can move into your upcoming view. I find this super, super fast and I really, really enjoy playing around with this but like I say I'm not trying to learn everything I never need to go into labels I very rarely need to go into project view unless I'm actually doing my daily or weekly planning session usually my weekly planning session uh, I do occasionally need to go into filters just to modify them but that is just something that you may want to use I really really strongly recommend that as you develop your skills of using to do is that you really go in and drill down deep into learning the keyboard shortcuts. Just remember, this is an experimental feature, the command menu. It will be coming soon, I'm sure, but it's really good. But the more important thing is the keyboard shortcuts that you can get from the, the question menu, the help menu, is these are all active now, whether you're in the in the experimental or not. These are actually all here now. And again, what I would do is I would just suggest you have a look at some. I would look at the general ones because these are the ones that you will probably use very a lot more. And as you learn, you'll get faster and faster at using them. So there you go. I just wanted to give you an update on the keyboard shortcuts. And if you want to join the experimental feature, I should point out that if you go into your settings, uh, you can, let's go into general, I think you can go down to the bottom and uh, you may have to do this, actually you do have to do this on the web I think, um, oh there you go, it's actually in my, I'm using the app version here, so if you go into advanced you can turn on experimental features, I found that Todoist is very very stable, it's very unlikely to be buggy, of course there is that risk of things being buggy but if you want to get into the experimental features just go into the advanced section of your settings and turn on experimental features. It's a really good thing to do because you do get to see and play around with some of the new features. So there you go, that's keyboard shortcuts. Something I would strongly recommend that you get to play with because it will save you a lot of time in the future. Thank you very much for watching this episode and it just remains for me now to wish you all a very, very productive week. Hello, thank you very much for watching my videos. Now I have something exciting to tell you about. Recently I have developed a brand new time management system. It's a system designed to manage your time in the 21st century. The world has changed a lot over the last 20 years. In fact, it's actually changed a lot this year. And what we need now is a system, a time management system that is very easy to use, easy to maintain, so that you can spend more of your time doing the work. And that's what the time sector system is all about. It's going to change your whole belief system about way, the way a time management system should work, because this focuses on when, when you are going to do the task. And let's be honest, it doesn't matter how motivated, inspired, or how urgent something is. If you don't have time to do it, it is never going to get done. And that's what this system is built around, getting your work done. So you can spend more of your time doing the things that you want to do. I hope you join me in this course. The full details of the course are in the show notes below. So please join me and thank you very much for watching this brief video.